swarm of asteroids. These things will hit the Earth in the future. They have hit the Earth in the past. These are the Earth-crossing asteroids. In the 1980s, new evidence emerged of the terrible threat impact poses to life on Earth. Deep beneath Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula is a 190-mile-wide crater made by a 100-million megaton impact. It dates to the time 65 million years ago when two-thirds of all living species, including the dinosaurs, disappeared from the face of the planet. On March 22, 1989, an asteroid came within six hours of striking the Earth, but was not detected until much later. Other asteroids have come even closer. One would have hit the Earth if it had come just four hours sooner. I don't think that people took the notion of, of the hazard of, of impact seriously uh, in the early days of our, of our work here. Uh, first of all, it took a while for the news to get out. The news that would change everything began to break on the night of March 23, 1993. The shoemakers and their collaborator, David Levy, decided to take some pictures of the sky despite persistent clouds. This was not a good night for observing, much less for making historic discoveries. Five, four, three, two, one. Open. I'm on. Okay, you're on. I could hardly see the star I was supposed to be following because Jupiter was so close that the glare of the big planet was, was swamping the eyepiece. Okay. All right. And plus 37.59. Okay. I started to examine the film looking at all the things that I knew would be there, the ghost image of Jupiter and the spikes from, that we see on the films when we've got a very bright star or a bright planet. And then I started to go by something, and I thought, that's a galaxy? No, that's not a galaxy. And here was this most unusual looking object, and I thought, it looks like a comet. It looked like a comet, all right, except it was a comet that was stretched out. Our films don't have enough resolution to really see what the details are, because we're covering a big area of the sky, and so the comet's actually quite tiny. The team called their friend astronomer Jim Scotty, who was manning a more powerful telescope, and asked him to check their finding. He promised to call back as soon as his telescope could be repositioned. Well, by now, it's about two hours that has gone by. And then I decided the time had come. Jim had had enough time to take a look, and I called Jim Scotty, and he answered the phone in a voice that I had never heard before. And I said, Jim, are you okay? And he says, uh, yes. David, the sound you heard is me trying to pick my jaw off the floor. And I said, do we have a comet? And he said, Boy, do you have a comet. And he started describing what he saw. And I was repeating everything to the two of you. And every sentence, it had these five tails, at least five discrete nuclei. But he said, I think there's more. And meantime, that music, we had, we had just had Beethoven's first symphony that was playing in, in our room, just happened to be on. And the fourth movement started, and it starts with this very slow little introduction. As just as, as Jim said, boy, do you have a comet, then the symphony went into its full motion. <laughs> and then right at that point, Jim says, boy, do you have a comet. 
The comet, essentially an asteroid with a long tail of dust and gas, had been torn into several pieces by Jupiter's gravity. Of course, the big kicker, the, the big news that it was going to hit Jupiter, didn't arrive until about six weeks later. Here is this man looking at a computer screen and it's saying your comet with your name on it is going to collide with Jupiter in 14 months and Gene was sitting there and he was looking at it and his, he was shaking his head and he said I don't believe it I'm going to see an impact in my lifetime I just don't believe this now the question is what was what was going to happen were we going to have a big show or was it going to be something that no one could see even as Shoemaker Levy 9 approached Jupiter, some eminent scientists remained skeptical it would make much of an impact. Many astronomers believed the giant planet would swallow the comet into its vaporous depths. On July 16, 1994, when the comet's leading fragment was due to cross Jupiter's path, scientists and reporters gathered at the headquarters of the Hubble Space Telescope. Gene found an empty office to call for news from distant ground-based telescopes. We have heard that there have been some observations from Spain. Dan, can't you make In which a, uh, I want to hear that. Uh, what were the question? is uh, how soon will Brian be? There would be no reliable data until the Hubble team downloaded the day's first images of Jupiter. And they did in fact detect the plume. In the auditorium, Gene had little more information than the gathered reporters. We should all take these reports very carefully and cautiously at this time. They need to be confirmed. The tiny spot on Jupiter was, in fact, a fiery plume about half the size of the Earth. I'd like to introduce Dr. Heidi Hamill. We just downloaded the first two orbits, which I have a raw laser printer output. This is as raw as it gets. Um, we can actually see the impact site itself. And I'll remind you, this is for A, the first one, not the brightest one. So we're going to have a really exciting week. <laughs> I think we're very, very privileged tonight to see an event that's, that's not once in a lifetime, it's, it's once in a millennium. Gene's vindication was a long time coming. Now it arrived with a million megaton bang. Few scientists have seen their ideas demonstrated on this magnificent scale. That was one great moment in our lives. That it vindicated what Gene had been trying to tell everybody all these years. And that it, the, the SL9 impacts spelled it out in black and white that Gene, you got.